Beneath all that was an address where you could buy tickets and find out where the show was playing. And right at the bottom, just above the pictures of the snake and spider, not for the faint-hearted, some restrictions apply. Cirque du Freak, I muttered softly to myself. Cirque was French for circus, circus of freaks. Was this a freak show? It looked like it. I began reading the flyer again, immersed in the drawings and descriptions of the performers. In fact, I was so immersed I forgot about Mr. Dalton. I only remembered him when I realized the room was silent. I looked up and saw Steve standing alone at the head of the class. He stuck out his tongue at me and grinned. Feeling the hairs on the back of my neck prickle, I stared over my shoulder and there was Mr. Dalton standing behind me, reading the flyer, lips tight. What is this? He snapped, snatching the paper from my hands. It's an advertisement, sir, I answered. Where'd you get it? He asked. He looked really angry. I'd never seen him this worked up. Where'd you get it? He asked again. I licked my lips nervously. I didn't know how to answer. I wasn't going to tell on Alan, and I knew he wouldn't own up by himself. Even Alan's best friends know he's not the bravest in the world. But my mind was stuck in low gear, and I couldn't think of a reasonable lie. Luckily, Steve stepped in. Mr. Dalton, it's mine, he said. Yours? Mr. Dalton blinked slowly. I found it near the bus stop, sir, Steve said. Some old guy threw it away. I thought it looked interesting, so I picked it up. I was going to ask you about it later, at the end of class. Oh. Mr. Dalton tried not to look flattered, but I could tell he was. That's different. Nothing wrong with an inquisitive mind. Sit down, Steve. Steve sat. Mr. Dalton stuck a thumbtack on the flyer and pinned it to the bulletin board.